So, welcome viewers once again to this NPTEL course on educational leadership. So, in the last class we are discussing about uh, turn around leadership and uh, in that context we are discussing about uh, the uh, turn around leaders qualities, capabilities and competences. So, we were uh, talking about the um, Australian Council of uh, Teacher Learning Centers and their suggestions for bringing out um, some components in the uh, training of uh, turn around leaders. So, now we will discuss about these components, what are the specific competencies, capabilities they have suggested for uh, the leadership training programs uh, to make our academic leaders um, turn around leaders for total transformation of our educational institutions. So, according to um, ALTC, um, these Australian uh, findings. So, the most effective leaders know how to optimize the satisfactions, like you know simultaneously uh, so, they are also the academic leaders, they also focus on improving the quality of education, they themselves are the continuous learners, uh, lifelong learners. So, they have to update not on um, their, uh, their knowledge, uh, the domain knowledge, their um, you know strategic knowledge, their functional skills, their soft skills, uh, you know their generic skills. So, they have to continuously update multiple aspects of their personality. So, uh, they know how to optimize the satisfaction as an academic leader, because not only uh, they are the leader of the um, mass in bringing the transformation in the work culture or administration, but also he has to get the satisfaction from some academic inputs also from time to time bringing uh, um, uh, then updating his own knowledge, his own um, research. Uh, so, so they know how to match it, they know how to match, how to get the um, satisfaction, how to optimize this satisfaction as an academic leader and how to deal with the challenges uh, in an informed, proactive, productive and efficient way. So, how to optimize his satisfaction as an academic leader and at the same time, how to deal with the challenges that he is facing. Uh, in the process of uh, transformation of the uh, educational institution. So, he has to be very informed, uh, informative in the sense that he has to be uh, uh, you know very informative in collecting the information, in gathering the inf information and thinking about it actively being very proactive then uh, design proactive in designing the action plans and also thinking about its uh, um, you know implementation and the consequences being very productive and very and pr productive and efficient. So, he has to balance, he has to balance both his academic uh, behavior, academic input, academic uh, leadership as well as the you know administrative leadership or the uh, institutional leadership. So, in this context he has to develop multiple competences and multiple capabilities. Let us discuss about this. The competence is like that uh, possessing the requisite uh, capacity and knowledge required for management. So, they are here they have to learn some, some, uh, some important uh, you know uh, capacities and the knowledge required for the management, how to manage the institutions how and again moreover how to manage the educational institutions, possessing the key skills and knowledge required to deliver the task that make up the specific job. So, here his job is not just about leading people, managing the regular um, activities of the institution, but managing an educational institution. So, he has to specifically learn about the specific capacity and the knowledge required for uh, leading the um, educational institution. So, here is the, the question is um, educational management, management of educational institution and for that reason he has to possess certain key skills and the knowledge related to education, related to educational management to deliver the task and that of that make up some specific job. So, it may not be exactly same uh, like other kinds of management because relative to different kinds of the institution the nature of or the type of um, or the style of management also changes. So, he has to develop certain capabilities like associated with the more higher education leadership. So, here in um, turnaround leadership, in case of turnaround leadership training program, the capacities or the capacity building should be more towards uh, higher education leadership. Now, here um, being a higher education leader, the uh, the leaders, the uh, the leaders, the turnaround leaders, then uh, need to possess uh, not only the vision, mission, etc. about the institution, but different competencies. Like along, we can say the along with four C's, four C's like the communication, uh, communication abilities, the collaborative ab uh, abilities, and the critical thinking abilities, and the creative thinking abilities. They have to have their own vision, larger vision, mission, and goal for. Um, the institution for the organizations. So, here it, it should be more associated with higher education leadership with having talent and capacity necessary to operate successfully 
uh, to achieve continuous improvement and innovation. So, here they have to again align with the uh, high academic uh, uh, you know uh, improvement in terms of research, in terms of uh, innovation, in terms of you know strategic thinking, in terms of creative thinking, in terms of bringing out some innovative uh, you know innovative uh, strategy, innovative design, innovative tool, innovative you know research output so that which can be implemented for the social benefits. So, here uh, constantly he has to focus on the higher educational requirements, higher education goals, higher education leadership. Uh, so, and for that matter he has to acquire the talent, he has to acquire the talent and the capacity necessary for um, um, bringing that change in the uh, organizations to uh, continuously achieve the improvement and in innovation. That means, in the on the one side he has to bring the um, bring the improvement in the academic uh, quality, research, innovation, uh, research output uh, and uh, so quality of education, quality of teaching, uh, bring all the academic aspect and another aspect is the organization aspect, manager, management aspect, uh, people aspect uh, or you know work culture aspect. So, see he has to uh, balance both these two aspect, one is the organizational activity, institutional activity approach, another is the uh, academic uh, activity approach. So, uh, again he has to uh, you know he has to acquire certain specific attributes, attributes like being able to work productively, calmly, persuasively and willingness to take the responsibility. So, he has to work continuously con uh, um, uh, continuously for the um, um, uh, you know uh, bringing some uh, positive change, uh, um, being productive and being constructive, um, being very calm and cool, being uh, you know um, persuasive in his communication, because you know he has to bring the reforms, the change, the uh, total transformation through you know not only just forcing his ideas and thoughts, but uh, you know um, having the dialogue with others, uh, discussing with others, uh, bringing the consensus, evaluating the effectiveness of each and every strategy accordingly design the action plan. So, so constant uh, engagement uh, with others uh, with through communication has core here the, these four skills C's are very important like const communication means constantly um, discussing with others, uh, taking their perspectives, communicating, negotiating persuading people, convincing people, then thinking about its um, pros and uh, cons, then um, before uh, implementing those ideas or uh, designing the action plan, then thinking about its consequences. So, so here persuasive communication being calm, uh, willingness to take the responsibility that means, uh, uh, being accountable for um, uh, what uh, what he is going to uh, change and then capacity to inspire others, how to engage others, involve others, inspire others to be as proactive as he is and, and taking the sound decision making, uh, taking the um, that means, the sound decisions, empowering others uh, uh, to take the correct decision, then again maintain the integrity, ethics, value standards and um, being very enthusiastic, very you know always focused, uh, positive spirit, uh, um, uh, positive spirit to be there uh, to motivate others. So, you can say it is a 24 7 kind of you know positive attributes, competency, capability. So, you know working constantly on all these um, dimensions. So, second having uh, having the emotional and cognitive capacity. So, he has to as we have already discussed he has to be highly emotional intelligent. So, and of uh, high intellectual caliber to perfectly blend all these two components both the affective component and the cognitive component uh, uh, to to figure out what uh, to figure out all the uh, answers to the, all these questions like what, when, why, how to draw upon the specific competencies, uh, uh, how to identify, how to develop, how to um, uh, you know um, manifest, how to blend, how to specify some uh, competencies with capacity to learn from the experience and constantly his brain is um, and his thinking and his brain, his brain is acting, is working on uh, uh, that means, how to optimize, how to customize, how to optimize, how to personalize everything, how to justify. So, all kinds of you know kinds of you know perfect matching perfect uh, customization, perfect stakeholder management, perfect uh, satisfaction. So, he I mean, always uh, or he constantly tries to bring the perfection not only in his performance, but in others performance, uh, in other satisfaction, in fulfilling others needs, all kinds of things. So, constantly he is engaged, he is engaging himself with the emotional intelligence and blending it perfectly with the uh, cognitive ability, intellectual caliber and again learning from the experience and uh, gaining 
um, gaining the knowledge from different sources, from uh, different uh, networkings, uh, from different um, you know uh, uh, conferences, from different workshops, etc. Gathering the knowledge, assimilating those knowledge, uh, blending those knowledge in his uh, action plan and policy. So constantly he is on uh, action. He is in ac on action. He is on the top of his toes. Then again, as we have already discussed, collaborative leadership. He himself um, um, may not bring the all the change, total change, but he has to collaborate with others. So there, uh, so collaborative leadership is also like in the at the top job, like he himself as a being the only leader, he cannot bring the change. He has to build a team of leaders. So he has to build a team of leaders, and in that uh, in that uh, process, he has to collaborate with others. So the collaborative leadership it works best in higher education because higher education being a very vast organization, large institution with large activities, large responsibilities and all kinds of dimensions. So, it is not just possible for one academic leader, turn around leader, authentic leader to lead people to lead the institution. Here, he needs a team of effective leaders, team of um, leaders who collaborate uh, with each other, with everybody uh, with the same vision, mission, goal and spirit uh, and um, activities. So, it as it models what effective teachers do to help the students. So, in that collaborative team, the teachers, uh, effective teachers are to be there, effective uh, colleagues are to be there, effective other uh, leaders are to be there, student representatives can be there. So, it is a team of uh, leaders, you know, uh, workspace that means to think uh, the best, because uh, as, uh, as um, every individual is expert in their own domain. So, he has to collect that people from the different domains having different expertise and um, motivate them and to build his own collaborative team. So, who can bring the total transformation in the organization? So, here you can see uh, there are it is a it is a framework, it is a framework of academic leadership capabilities like uh, with all these abilities, capabilities and the um, competencies. Here we can say the personal capabilities are there, uh, some interpersonal capabilities are required and some cognitive capabilities are required. Simultaneously, some role specific competencies are required and generic competencies are required. So, this model has been given that all the five dimensions are necessary for effective performance as an academic leader. So, the turn around leader has to be a success academic leader. So, now let us discuss about this uh, these specific competencies. So, all these five circles, all these five domains and dimensions are equally important for being a successful academic leader and uh, you, the same person can also be a very good turnaround leader uh, with a vision and mission to bring the transformation his educational institution. Now, let us discuss about the personal uh, capabilities. Personal capabilities are uh, these are the things like self regulation. Self regulation how he can not only monitor control his own behavior, he can regulate uh, regulate his own behavior. Here again high level of emotional intelligence is required. So, it is also aligned with Goldman's emotional intelligence and self regulation in the sense that understanding of one's own strength and weakness of the leader he being an individual being a human being definitely you will be having some strength, some weaknesses as well and but he needs to understand these things. Understanding one's own strength and weakness, ability to learn from the errors, ability to learn from the experience and again uh, to be resilient, to be optimist, uh, optimist, to be resilient, how to bounce back from uh, bounce back from the adversity, from the uh, from the shortcomings, from the uh, you know from any kind of failure and being able to remain calm under pressure even if he is overstressed, even if he is under pressure um, um, or, or works under work stress, then he has to how to maintain the calmness and the poise, he has to be poised and cool and, and maintain the work life balance. So, so, he has to be very vigilant about his you know work plans, action plans or day to day routine plans in the sense that how much time he is devoting to the work, how much time he is devoting to his personal life, how to maintain a balance and how to not to be very overstressed uh, with the work stress or the job stress and how to be optimist, uh, how to be resilient even in the most adverse uh, situation, how to bounce back, how to learn from the weaknesses and the failures uh, and, and errors. So, this is these are the kind of uh, behavior called the self regulatory behavior. Second is uh, decisiveness, uh, decisiveness means how to take the right decision, correct decision at the correct right time. So, decisiveness is the willingness to make hard and firm decisions. Sometimes being the leader, you cannot satisfy everybody. Always there will be oppositions, always there will be resistance to this or that scheme. So, but again he has to, even though he is a democratic leader, even though he is very open minded, even though he is you know uh, very uh, sensitive, uh, sensible in 
uh, in um, respecting others, their perspectives and opinion, but he has to take a firm decision at one point of time, he has to take a firm decision. So, in that matter by evaluating weighing the all the aspects of um, that uh, particular decision, see he has to take a firm decision, a uh, firm decision uh, by evaluating all the pros and cons uh, on consequences and the uh, all aspects of the um, that um, policy. So, being confident and test, uh, take calculated risk, he has to be very confident when he is taking the firm decision, he has to be very confident about uh, its antecedents and consequences, he has to, I mean he will be, he should be a risk taker, because unless and until you become a risk taker, you cannot bring the change in the uh, institution. So, he has to be a risk taker, but he is a very calculative person, so taking the calculated risk calculated risk means there where the loss is very minimum. So, he dares to bring change by taking some risk, but again he has calculated what would be the consequence of that uh, risk taking behavior. So, where the um, you know risk the uh, hazards or the losses will be very minimum. Stick to the values and ethics, being a professional, being an academician, academician he has to very much uh, well integrated in his uh, you know in his uh, personality attributes, he, is, he has to stick to some um, education values, professional ethics and uh, yes definitely um, tolerate the ambiguity, even if there is no clarity in the first in sight or in the outset, he has to tolerate that ambiguity, try to understand the components and the underlying mechanisms etcetera and also uh, try to understand the um, uncertainties involved in that process to make it more clear and uh, you know perfect in uh, manifesting. So, commitment, again commitment. So, commitment he has to uh, be a committed person towards the uh, responsibility he has taken. So, he has to be very persevering, having energy, you know, uh, energy uh, all the time enthusiastic and proactive, energy, passion and enthusiasm for learning and teaching. So, it is not for passion for only for managing management and uh, bringing change, but also passion for learning, uh, research, uh, teaching and again high achievement and he himself has a high achievement need, high achievement goal, um, uh, career goals or, or, or you can say uh, professional excellence goal, he himself has a high achievement need and owning the responsibility for the professional activities, owning the responsibility for the all kinds of professional activities. That means, how much he is engaged in continuous learning, research, initiative, teaching behavior or academic part and activities, he himself has to be very responsible for all his, all kinds of his professional activities. So, influencing as we have already discussed communication and collaborations are the very important components. So, he has to develop those ability to influence others, now influence others not by just uh, saying or talking or uh, you know um, giving the dialogue or um, um, communicating to the verbally, but he has to uh, influence people through his behavior, through his activity, through uh, demonstrating his um, um, you know de demonstrating his uh, personality at personal attributes, his competencies. So, influencing people that is people's behavior and decision in effective ways, so that, that uh, they will be more motivated. So, motivating others to achieve again the positive outcomes uh, using the networks, whatever uh, network professional network he has developed by uh, he has to use it using these networks for solving different kinds of problems, utilizing the constructive uh, feedback for betterment. So, it is uh, so this influencing means does not mean that you have to just communicate, you have to convince others, you have to persuade others 24 hours uh, for um, for making them work or for making them very much motivated towards the positive outcome, but at the same time you need to modify, you need to change, you need to bring uh, positive change in your action plan also. So, uh, so, uh, so here you can say communication or persuasion it cannot be you know full proof without feedback. So, feedback is also very important component of communications. So, he has to um, constructively utilize those feedback feedback and he has for that matter he has to encourage his colleagues, his uh, students, his um, teachers to give the feedback. Um, so, and he has to utilize those feedback constructively to further improve the performance to further, uh, further improve the work process. So, again empathizing. So, here empathy is very much required uh, as we have already discussed about less ethnos being less ethnocentric and being more empathy for uh, you know for developing cultural uh, awareness, cultural fluency. So, empathizing to, to the people, empathizing to the not only the people associated with him directly, but to all the people or all the, uh, stakeholders, those uh, who are directly or indirectly related to him or the organization or the institution 
institution, empathizing to the staff, to the students, because uh, every individual has, uh, will be having their problem, own problems, uh, shortcomings, weaknesses, these and that. He has to listen to them and empathize them, to the staff, to the students, lis listening to different perspectives, different views, um, de de uh, developing the positive team based programs. So, it is not just that he has to spend all the time by listening to others, but take the essence out of it, how to uh, you use those essence, how to use those feedback for further improving the things and in this process he has to develop the positive team based programs. So, again team based learning, collaboratively learning, he, you know, is, he has to promote those things, promote those things in among the teachers, among the staff, among the students. So, in the collaborative the learning, in the team based learning, not only the students learn the best, but the staff, the colleague, the um, um, administrative uh, people, they also uh, learn a lot. So, uh, everywhere he has to uh, promote this uh, collaborative team work projects, team based uh, programs to uh, you know to uh, nurture cooperation, to nurture that kind of uh, attitude of sharing the thing with others. So, every activities and everything. Uh, so, this cooperative and collaborative kind of um, uh, work environment should also be um, encouraged. Now, uh, um, cognitive capabilities, cognitive capabilities like uh, so that, that is intellectual um, acuity, intellectual uh, caliber, intellectual uh, you know ability that is diagnosis, one such is the diagnosis, diagnosis of our underlying causes of the problems. So, he has to be here again diagnose, we have already talked about critical thinking. So, being critical he has to being critical he has to evaluate all the aspects, all the problems from its root causes. So, diagnosing the underlying causes of the problems, identify the dimensions and the complexity of the situation, all these things uh, can be possible through analytical thinking, critical thinking uh, for evaluating everything. Then strategy, then strategy, has, strategy then he has to formulate strategy strategy for strategy formation thinking creatively again, how to bring the solution to this thing. So, he has to synthesize everything, analyze everything, synthesize everything and think of uh, its solution in a very creative way. So, strategy formation thinking creatively setting the priorities uh, designing the achievable action plans. So, even if he has thought of multiple options, solutions etcetera, but he has to prioritize. First, what would be the first priority, second priority, third priority, accordingly he has to make a priority list, he has to formulate the mul multiple uh, options, options in terms of hypothesis and action plans. So, and how to you know how to implement those action plans and hypothesis and experiment or testing the hypothesis, he has to um, formulate the strategy for that. So, he has to be very strategic in synthesizing the information and formulating the hypothesis or probable solutions. Then again flexibility and responsiveness, flexibility and he has to be very um, flexible not uh, rigid and he has to be very flexible and responsive uh, to uh, you know to adjusting to adjusting his action plan according to the demand of the situation or the problem. Uh, that means, as per the as per the context, as per the timing, as per the uh, situation, as per the urgency, uh, you know as per the importance. So, he has to uh, change, change those action plans as per the requirement. So, in that manner he has to be very uh, maintain the flexibility and responsiveness in adjusting the action plans with the requirement of the situation. So, besides these things, there are certain, uh, certain other key competencies, key competencies like learning and teaching. How to develop effective higher learning programs, how to identify and disseminate good learning practices and how to nurture the uh, you know good uh, teachers um, capabilities, how to nurture the students uh, abilities, how to personalize the, learn, personalize the learning, how to you know uh, nurture the creativity of students. Uh, so, he has to, um, he has to uh, identify all those things and maintain those uh, maintain those uh, um, maintain those things uh, to improve their performance. So, university operation again he has to also develop uh, the learning and understanding of how the uh, operationally how the physically um, administration runs or how operationally a university runs or it functions. So, what kind of risks are involved, what kind of uh, so how to manage those risks. So, risk management then uh, what are the other legal uh, you know legal implications are there in terms of you know rules, regulations. Uh, uh, stat statutes and you know, uh, UGC or AICT rules, regulation, all kinds of things. So these are the you know the university's uh, functional uh, function functional dimensions or operations. How the um, he has to understand those uh, operational management or the administration of the university's risk management or the legal implications of the 
higher learning institutions. Similarly, self he has to develop self organization skills. So, uh, besides the running the business, running the uh, organization, running the institution, he himself has to man manage his own um, professional uh, professional um, learning as well as the um, uh, research uh, professional learning and as well as the uh, uh, administrative or uh, management. Uh, uh, pro management uh, roles. So, uh, the managing one's own professional learning and developing uh, development using the ICT effectively. So, here he is not only an administrative letter, institutional letter, but he is an academician as well. So, how to uh, perfectly um, you know uh, organize perfectly manage his own uh, you know professional learning in his own domain in his uh, in the inter inter in the interdisciplinary research in the subject co um, uh, subject uh, content how he has to improve and update his latest knowledge in the domain as the same time he has to uh, manage the administrative things uh, or bring the transformation in institution. So, how to manage this professional learning and the development by using technology, technology or ICT very effectively. So, that it is not just about work life balance, but it is also uh, you know managing your um, achievement needs, academic needs, achievement needs and your role as a uh, transformation leader. Then there are also uh, other uh, competencies like delegating the responsibilities. So, so, as we have already discussed about the collaborative leadership, so he has to delegate some um, responsibility to others by building the team of learners, team of uh, you know workers, uh, team of um, students. So, who can act as the guiding uh, coalition that means, so to identify that uh, um, talent or uh, potentialities then to form different kinds of teams and then to delegate the different responsibilities and the power to work on different projects. So, again another is a deliberative democracy, deliberately he has to bring the democracy or democratic atmosphere in the environment. So, deliberative democracy says that it in initiates a conversation among the adults who listen to one another. So, he has to bring that uh, atmosphere demo, deliberative or democracy, uh, democratic atmosphere in the workplace, where the people they, they, they listen to each other. It is not just about my personal needs or uh, uh, our team's personal needs, but everybody listens to everybody, attempt to persuade each other by argument and evidence. So, so there is a culture of you know arguments, dialogues, communication. So, uh, argument based um, uh, you know uh, decisions or the democratic decisions, the consensus decisions provided uh, supported by the evidence and the uh, argument. So, to be very open to the constructive criticism. So, the more you welcome, the more we you invite the uh, criticism and constructive criticism, the um, more the decision will be error proof or the full proof or more uh, positive uh, in terms of the output. So, then relentless persuasion, so communication, uh, communication in not just exchanging the ideas, having the dialogue, um, constantly um, being engaged in the argument uh, for supporting uh, or um, you know defending your ideas, thoughts etcetera, but at the end it is also persuasion and coming to the consensus, coming to the uh, uniformity, coming to the willingness of uh, uh, taking a decision, uh, consensus and decision which is the you know uh, is good for everybody. So, relentless persuasion and the consistent effort to motivate the people to move to the new heights. It is a cons relentless effort of the turned allowed leaders to constantly motivate, constantly enc encouraging them, constantly give, give them training, constantly uh, improving their performance, capabilities and competencies to bring them to the new heights of the turnaround leaders model and the help others to learn. That means, to reach that vision and mission and goal of the institution. And the um, and the uh, um, another competence is that managing the relationship with the stakeholders. So this one is the most important thing, like the managing the relationship with the stakeholders through uh, different kinds of like both effective internal external communication. As you know, the communication, collaboration, critical thinking, and creative thinking are the four basic C's along with the vision, mission, and the goal. So uh, then monitoring and self evaluation, constantly monitoring, being reflective, being critical, being um, introspective about your own. Uh, performance, so monitoring and self evaluation, performance evaluation and management from time to time, performance evaluation and appraisal again here like the organization we need to have a very transparent appraisal system also to give the feedback to everybody. 
mm, to get the not only to get the feedback uh, being the leader, but also to give the feedback to others. So, building a sustainable learning community. So, sustainability in, in the work culture, sustainable learning community that means the to develop a community uh, which is sustainable in the sense that continuously they are engaged in uh, learning, continuously they are engaged in disseminating the information, continuously they are sharing their knowledge. So, that is the building a sustainable learning community, community developing the good interpersonal relationship, yes, stakeholder management. Uh, is a very important not only with the teachers, uh, teachers, colleagues, parents and that, but with the community people. Stay, uh, that is called the uh, interpersonal relationship to, to all the stakeholders, those who are directly or indirectly uh, associated with the um, institution. And uh, to my belief that educational institution, th that means the whole society is the stakeholder. The, oh, we are being uh, influenced by the uh, education system, educational uh, institution, etc. Because all of us, we are a part of this, part and parcel of this thing. So, whole society is a stakeholder. So, stakeholder and community engagement through collaboration, from different kinds of collaboration in the academic tasks, curricular tasks or non-curricular tasks or the developmental tasks, other kinds of activities. Networking with other NGO, NGOs like uh, net, networking with uh, career guidance um, agencies, care networking with the ministry, networking with the NGOs networking with the you know uh, counseling uh, units networking with um, all kind other academic institutions. So, then uh, listening to reflecting and acting upon the community feedback again it didn't come feedback of not just your own staff or colleague and students, but feedback of the community how uh, that means uh, the way you are performing the way you are trying to uh, transform the institution. So, what are its effect what are its impact on others on the community. So, you need to have a uh, feed uh, net need to have the feedback from the community as well. So, the how to utilize this community feedback that is also equally important. So, listening to reflecting and uh, acting upon the community feedback and utilizing it this for the betterment. Now, we stop here. Mm, uh, formally, we just completed this uh, turn around uh, leadership uh, part. Now, in the next class, we will uh, discuss about educational entrepreneurship. Now, for the time being, we stop here. Now, thank you very much for listening to me patiently. Thank you.